Hello and welcome. Uh, this is our weekly uh, law firm marketing show and tell. Uh, we're one person short at the moment. It's interesting. <laughs> broadcast studio behind the scenes here i can see everyone frantically getting ready so we're as prepared as we usually are for this which is <laughs> which is always good um so we currently have uh, rich and simon as usual our special guest sarah as well uh charlotte will hopefully be joining us soon if you're watching this charlotte hello you're supposed <laughs> to be with us but hey we'll Brilliant. see what happens uh we're going to have a, a quick discussion about uh swag one of my favorite topics, uh, merchandising, especially with uh, the law firms, and we have some great examples. But without further ado, uh, let's start with with Rich. Hello, Rich. Uh, would you hey, like David. to introduce yourself? Yes. Uh, so my name's Rich Dibbins from Staxton Digital, um, and I'm very much looking forward to today. Uh, I basically help law firms all around aspects of digital marketing, specializing in LinkedIn and social media for them. That's great. Great to have you joining us again. And Simon, come and say hello. Hi, I'm Simon Marshall, founder of TBD Marketing. Uh, I help law firms do all forms of marketing, really, uh, virtual CMO for smaller firms. And then I help them with digital marketing for some of the larger firms. And we also have our special guest today, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi all. Um, so I'm Sarah Maguire. I am an estate planner or will writer, probably the, the word that people most commonly associate with us. Uh, I've been doing that for a couple of years now. Um, background was in, in housing, working with older people in sheltered housing environments. Great to have you joining us. And without further ado, <laughs> Hold on, let's just say she, she's no, just no, frantically no, no, no. coming in no, now. No, no. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll, I'll just quickly introduce myself. So, yeah, I always forget this part. I'm David Says, digital marketing consultant with Paper Gecko. Uh, I help companies, including those in the, the legal industry, with their, their digital issues. And believe me, they often have one or two of those. Um, so that that's me. And let's just quickly go over to Charlotte and say, hello, Charlotte. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> hello, sorry, after a smaller heart attack um, and some technological issues. Um, yeah, I don't know what I've missed. Uh, are we still on to introduction rounds? We're just doing the intros. You haven't missed a thing. Brilliant. Perfect. Um, well, my name is Charlotte Takach, as um, the screen would um, claim. And uh, I am the CMO of Novum Learning. Thank you very much for that. Right, we've got we've got everyone on the screen here. That's great. So as I say, today we're going to be having a, a discussion about the the sort of merchandising uh, that comes out of some of the law firms, some of the branding that they put out there. And I think it's it's a, a fascinating topic. Um, over over the years, I've been through many events, many law firms, and seen some of the stuff they put out. We've got some some great examples uh, coming through on here as well. So let's let's have a look Before at we do that, uh, David. Before we do that, I think the order we're going in is we're going to talk to Sarah first, aren't we today, and then get onto the merch. You're desperate to get onto the merch, David. That's we, 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 well, what can I do? I've even program. got my Streamyard T-shirt on. I mean, <laughs> oh man, I'm, I'm so prepared for this. <laughs> Oh, believe me, I've, in I've, got, shop, you? I've got the streaming mug to, here as well. Are you happy to talk merch first and then come around to you? Or you know, I haven't got much to say on merch, but I'm, I'm well, willing to listen. Well, so well, well, exactly. We don't want you sitting there too long bored, but you can join in and see how silly it I'm, is. I'm good at well. maintaining a, a, a face that looks like I'm not bored. So don't worry. Worry. That's fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm putting David, you up. David, you were tree around you like to do it. You go for the merch. Let, let's, let's, Sarah. Let, let's hear from you first, and then we'll go through and we'll, we'll talk about all the swag and the, the silliness, because I'm, I'm sure it, it, no silliness from you, from what I hear. Let me, let me, um, let me talk to you about how uh, Sarah can do a call today, right? I, I thought it'd be worth, I know that we do the show and tell, and I think it's really interesting, but um, Sarah and I have never spoken, I've never heard Sarah's voice. Like ever, no, uh, like never, never come across. And the reason I wanted her to join the, today's call is because um, she hangs out in some of the groups I hang around in, and her personal brand, <laughs> really like me, her personal brand, it strikes me, is so strong. 
and I really wanted to explore the topic that she uses so proficiently, which is humour, uh, in terms of LinkedIn marketing. And I just thought it'd be a really nice topic to cover uh, for a few minutes and just like how she uses it, what she does to prepare her posts and how she does it every day. So, Sarah, I, I don't know, did we... Um, I have a feeling I came across you first in a um, maybe in a LinkedIn marketing group through um, like Helen Pritchard, no, something like that. No, not me. Well, no, we even... did have communicated previously, but I must admit you're as memorable to me as I am to you, obviously, because <laughs> oh. I can't remember where. So. <laughs> a massive blow immediately. Um, so when you're, if people want to have a look, um, what's your uh, LinkedIn? What's your LinkedIn address? Is it? Just oh at God, Sarah, 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 Sarah McGuire hyphen Wills, I think I use. There we go. But it's uh, M C G U I R E. Oh yes, yeah. I'm not yeah. a Mac. I'm a Mac. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so, tell us about because I think it's something that we're lacking a bit in the legal oh, sector. God, yeah. That just that <laughs> idea, just the idea of using humour in the marketing. And I just wondered if you can walk through. You know, how did you get to using humour? What was it? What was it that made you think about using that approach in your marketing? Um, because that's how I am. <laughs> I can't say I sat. I didn't sit there one day and suddenly think, "Oh yeah, I need to be funny." But I tell you what, I, I did do this time last year. I just started using LinkedIn, and I, oh God, I was so boring. Um, really, kind of sensible posts. You must get a will because, and um, you know, you know that hushed voice that we all use when we talk about death. Um, and then I thought, well, it's not really me, and it's not how I talk about it to my clients. Um, it's not how I. When I work with older people in housing, it, it, they had quite a cavalier attitude towards death and dying. I mean, obviously, you were sensitive at the same time, but quite a humorous approach, asking them whether they've made it through the night and things like that. Um, so I kind of realised that most people out there don't want to be pussy-footed around, um, and it's not in my nature to do that. I mean, I'm, I'm, when I'm with clients, I can be, no, I am caring and sensitive, don't get me wrong, but... Um, yeah, most people, because they're scared of death, the best thing to do is just to laugh about it, isn't it? So I think that's how I've approached the posts and, and that's that's how I write and how I talk anyway. So I haven't really had to put anything on to do that. Is um, it something that you is it something that you kind of like draft in advance of time or do you just like do you just how do you how do you get inspired? How does it work? Um I've just got a really weird mind. Um I I I'd say yeah, I I I wouldn't say I don't block them out a week in advance or anything like that. It's on the day if something happens or oh, you know me it'd be like I'm making poached egg for lunch and something will happen and it'll spark off something or the dog will usually the dog will do something um yeah and it just sets my mind wandering and then I'll I'll, I'll draft it yeah in just like a word document and then it's just fitting into those 1300 characters isn't it sometimes um but yeah but I'm, I'm quite well known for doing the segues aren't I so I'll, I'll talk about something random and then I'll always bring it Back round to wills and the importance of a trust-based will and all I of that. Them. In prep for today's call, I was reading them out. To oh, my wife. Right? Apologise in advance. No, no, no. Far from it, right? And she's she's not she doesn't want to talk about death like ever, right? It's really it's just completely off limits. She really doesn't like doing it. So I start reading this post to her. She's looking at me like, how the hell is it going to go from here to talking about lasting powers of attorney? <laughs> and then suddenly, you just there's something that you do that's really clever, and I think we can all learn from it, which is just using that break point there's basically a handbrake turn that happens halfway through your article and it kind of brings yeah. us on top of it and um yeah is it so the thought process then it's just as random as something happens and you think oh, i know i'll i'll do a silly story like that do you ever do you ever you ever tempted to play it straight again or i did do the, I, I did a serious post the other day but they always bomb <laughs> <laughs> although you know i do get the leads from the serious posts as well but yeah i did do it i can't remember what it was the other day you know it, it, was, it was sensible um but yeah i don't get many views on those whereas the funny ones do and then they stick in people's minds because i have had people say to me oh, oh some poor woman the other day said oh, I, I dreamt about lasting power of attorneys last night and I woke up and I was like she said all oh, that bloody Sarah Maguire when she woke up because she knew it was me that told it um yeah so I, I yeah occasionally the sensible posts there what, um what difference has it made in terms of that because you said you've got like a high level of impressions and stuff so on, uh and 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 on the engagement side of things what what, what kind of results have we seen um I, I wouldn't say I measure them I mean I get, I get thousands per post of views um yeah and I, I get quite a few leads each week through from LinkedIn because of it and you know I get a lot of engagement on the post as well which I really like because I always think you know it's obviously people have enjoyed it if they're going to put a comment on there and I always try and reply 
to those comments as well. Because I think if people are taking the trouble, sorry, I'm just fine off the talk at the moment. <laughs> um, if people are taking the trouble to comment, then I should really reply to them. Do you leave it on then in the background all the time? Do you leave the comment? Do you leave LinkedIn um, no on all day long as you work? So, yeah. <laughs> Got, got no social life and no friends so yeah linkedin is my only outlet in life so um yeah i, I would say it's not an all day working, though, isn't it like uh, rich i think it was you that said to me a few weeks ago that it's one trick that you'd learn is just to switch on in the morning and leave it on and then don't turn it off until you finish at the end of the day and then uh, um as you that said some lawyers that when you dip in between files you know just take a look on linkedin every time you put a file down and go for something else or every time you close down the timer for a minute have a check in as well i quite like that idea of like the little and often approach to linkedin and using it that way mm -hmm. yeah otherwise there's a lot if you come back at the end of the day and there's like 30 40 comments and you want to reply to all it's going to take quite a you know quite a long time isn't it yeah, but yeah, i don't try and beat the algorithm or anything like that because right. who knows what that's all about really okay that's good um has anyone else seen any um, use of humour through law firm marketing stuff that you wanted to kind of mention or anything that we've got? I, I can't think of. I, I can remember <laughs> one going to the wrong for a firm uh, years ago where they had these awful divorce adverts and they're actually pretty, it would be offensive to today's ears anyway, but they were pretty offensive at the time as it were. And they, they cost a fortune and they absolutely bombed as well. But I think they spent a million quid on these, you know, um, or I can't even bring myself to say the words that they use in the advert. That's how bad they are, right? Just awful. So, but I don't know if you've seen any other humour. Rich, have you seen anything? Anyone uses it successfully? No, come back. There we go. Um, I've not seen many law firms do so much humour. I mean, I, I could probably count on one hand. Um, but I'd probably say up there with legal is, is cybercrime. And the cybercrime... Uh, probably the global page for it. They do so many humorous posts relating to cybercrime. Like there was one the other day and it said, um, if you're changing your password, please write it on this sheet and sign it. <laughs> um, and then underneath that, there was a post-it note and it went, Craig, please see me. Um, so, you know, it's it, imagery based humor. I'm, you know, cause the tech world, should we say IT is incredibly, can be incredibly dull. But they seem to, and it's the cyber cyber group. They've done it really well, and there's a number of agencies that do it incredibly well. But um, not not so many law firms doing comedy. I think because they have to be deemed as serious, nobody will take them serious if they come out with any comedy or put anything funny out there. You know, a commercial solicitor, I don't think would ever dream of posting very much comedy uh, or anything that's like slightly funny, just in case they. They don't get taken seriously in a legal factor. It's weird, isn't it? Because your old shop obviously runs the comedy kind of event. And then you get these ones in London as well, where they do these kind of stand up evenings for these barristers and lawyers that go and do it. So it's like there's, a, there's an outlet for it and everybody can, seems to want to do it. And then people don't ever bring that element of their game to what they're kind of doing on on social as well. I just think, I mean, you've got to be careful, obviously. Um, but Sarah, I think finds that balance of it's a difficult you know, line to trade but i i think um i don't have to consciously i think i know where that line is and I, i'm aware that at the end of the day you don't want to laugh about the, the fact that someone might be you know have got dementia or something like that and i would never you know my background working with people you know i wouldn't ever do that and i, I think that hopefully that comes across because i'd be really upset if, if anyone genuinely thought I was laughing at people if they were worried about you know becoming ill or, or dying or anything like that um but but, but no I, I it's a shame that other people don't use humor because I think it particularly using the metaphors as well I, I think it helps people understand the topic you're writing about you know when I talk about trust-based wills and things like that they're not concepts that people necessarily will have heard of so I think, I think using humor helps get the message across and I'm sure that could relate to lots of different different um other aspects of law as well i mean I, I think we can throw down the gauntlet and say that anyone can do that for the takeover code you know good luck to them if we can see improved m a communications through the use of humor yeah bring it on i'd love to see a few linkedin posts and all that as well there is a I, think, I know i was going to say i know of a lawyer he's called harvey harding and he's actually a property lawyer by day and by night he's a comedian oh. But okay. I never see very much of his stuff on LinkedIn from a comedy perspective. So, Harvey, if you're watching this, um, I think you should do some comedy posts, maybe, uh, you know, 
get you and you and Sarah to uh, possibly uh, do a double act. I don't know, but yeah, he's he's a part time comedian. Okay, that reminds yeah, me. There's, there's, there's the copyright guy, isn't it? Called the Dave. Is it Dave Harland? Oh, Dave Harland, brilliant. Yeah, he like does, he's the BS detective, isn't he? He does some really good stuff as well. Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And there's another guy as well that does that. He uses a, he basically designs things exactly the wrong way and optimizes them to be terrible. And it's it's absolutely genius. It's it's really clever because um, I think it it's almost like using comic songs just to get a, a designer to kind of look at your stuff as well. It's very very clever. Listen, Sarah. Listen, thank you so much for um, okay. talking to you. Maybe if you can listen in give any tips mm -hmm. and tricks anything that you see on the merch as well because there is pretty much humorous stuff that we're going to be looking at sorry sorry can i just jump in because I, I didn't want to interrupt anyone but um i actually wanted to ask you sarah that um do you find that people are so obviously scared of and uncomfortable with the idea of death that the fact that you are able to use you like you find that it's actually better for us to get comfortable with the idea that we don't live forever and you are able to achieve that through humour? Because um, I, I don't know if you watched any of the previous sessions, but I'm, I'm really interested in, like, consumer psychology, well, psychology in general. Um, and and th that's something that I... I really passionately believe, that, especially in law, because exactly as you said, like it's so complex and it's so scary like especially for the you know average human being like you don't understand what a will is you have no idea what can possibly happen to your things after you die um and you know it's this ambiguous thing that you don't really want to talk about because you don't like thinking about it so i'm just really interested that when you get leads through linkedin is that is there a piece of feedback yet Sorry, I didn't catch your last little bit there. What was that? Oh, sorry. Book? That's all right. You um, said when I get laid through LinkedIn, what does uh, that say Is there a feedback that you get from, from those people that actually now they are more comfortable talking about? Yeah, I think so. And I've, I've had a couple of people say that um, the way I write that they've then shown um, so thing about lasting power of attorney, they've, they've shown it to a parent and it's helped them broach the subject because that can be a tricky thing to to, to broach uh with, with people particularly if you've got elderly parents and you don't know how to bring up the subject of maybe it's a good idea for them to get a, a lasting power of attorney so yeah and, and i think I've, I've had people come to me and say they they found the, the experience enjoyable and fun and they didn't think they were going to feel like that about getting their will written so um you know that's a, a nice compliment to get rich have, I, you been, have you been out to the robotics lab out on the uh, ue campus here you know, I can't say I have. It's been a while since I was at UE. Last time I was there, I was in a student yeah. union for till two in the morning, to be honest. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, the, they've got this amazing robotics lab, and it was on um, a lot of their stuff was on Channel 4 a while ago. And they had this um, amazing uh, set of sessions. I don't know if you saw them, Sarah, or to Charlotte's point just now. And they had this basic robot interviewing people about the most difficult conversations they have in their life between father and daughter and mother, you know, mother and son and things like that, right? People talk about money, people talk about all these kind of things. And the idea was we think that humans interceding that um, would be easier. And okay. we find but actually, these robots are enabling conversations to happen. I'm not saying, Sarah, that you're kind of an LPA will... Um, <laughs> you're you know, saying I'm like a robot, basically. But it's this idea that we think that... Um, I guess what I'm talking about is that permission to talk and just mm -hmm. uh, replicating that ability to... We're all there wanting to know the answers, aren't we? And I think what I love about Sarah's work is she leans in, brings... I'm always going to be um, a, a great lover of humour being used and stuff because it's, you know, one of my great loves. But, you know, that idea of leaning in and talking about things that are a little bit taboo for other people, using humour to break down those barriers and watching the conversations that take place is just... I just think it's brilliant. I think firms could... They don't have to replicate it, but I think we could no. learn... It, right and you've got to do their own version of it right? there's no harm yeah in it. I, I think that the key for me is, is making helping people see that they, they're not the only ones to feel like that because i mean i've always been scared of death and and you didn't really talk about it, it was a like taboo thing and then it turns out other people are and 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 the thing that really gets to me as well is uh, people have these sort of skeletons in their closet and they think they're the only one that you know either they don't get on with their parents or they've fallen out with their kids um, and, and that needs to be brought up with the will and they're quite embarrassed to talk about it so I've tried to put the message out there that actually it's so common 
um, and that you don't need to be embarrassed. And, you know, particularly when they talk to me, it's not, I'm not going to be shocked or, you know, or make them feel bad about it. It's just how it is. So um, I think that, that's important to get across as well. Sarah, it reminds me, it reminds me of the scene. I don't know if you've ever watched Patch Adams, but the, uh, the, late, the, the late Robin Williams is mm -hmm. dealing with a difficult patient. And that difficult patient is, is going through kidney, uh, kidney failure, basically. Uh, and he doesn't want to talk about death or anything. And, you know, he's like, I don't care. And Robin Williams goes, kicks the, in the messages in our off, offline chat, it was kick the bucket, you know, all the metals and all those words and saying. I did post it the other day. Yeah. yeah, and he walks in in a set of wings and he's reading the Bible to him. <laughs> and it just puts a smile on his face, which begs me the question to ask you, Sarah, when we're all allowed out and we can go back to normal, Will you dress up as the Grim Reaper if a client? No, they've been called it before now. Like they did my networking group the other day. They called me the Death Star. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and we we did um, a post we did the other day. We were trying to come up with different um, euphemisms for, for death. And um, I, I'd Google one. Was it based in the formald formaldehyde turkey, which I'd not heard before, which I quite liked. And all sorts of things there that give people a bit of a giggle about it. But no, I don't normally dress up as the Grim Reaper. Uh, and contrary to what people think. I don't only deal with people who are just at death's door. And doing your will doesn't make you more likely to die in the next week or so. That was, so that was that the previous line that you used yesterday when you just said something like, you know, talking about your will doesn't make it any more likely you're going to die anytime oh, soon. I just, oh, it's such a, it's such a brilliant yeah. effort. Listen, Sarah, thank you so much for okay. all your yep. thoughts on, on that. Um, you. And uh, listening it's to what we're doing on the yeah. merch side of things. And then I shall hand back to David, really. He's going to run us through... Um, a series of ridiculous photos that we've got. <laughs> <laughs> we, we always seem to have a, a series of ridiculous photos or interesting YouTube clips, which uh, is always fun. <laughs> but no, I think, you know, humour is, is so important when it comes to branding. Um, I think it's a great way to connect with an audience when done well. I think for an industry like legal, it can be incredibly difficult to do. Uh, I just think of the amount of times working with partnerships and having to get sign off on things and anything that was humorous, slightly edgy, off center um, was never the easiest thing to do. Um, but I think one of the one of the best examples of humor I've seen recently, um, the Mint Mobile out of Canada with um, oh the Deadpool guy. Ryan, Ryan Reynolds? Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. yeah. Um, the ads that he's doing on that, I mean, it's just so ridiculously funny. And very little to do with telecommunications. Uh, it's just very interesting. Uh, but no, we, we've also been having a look at uh, some of the areas of, of, of <clears throat> corporate merchandising, or swag, as I like <laughs> to call it. And I, I might be a bit of a fan of swag. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. So, you know, <laughs> we, we use StreamYard for the broadcast. And, um, <laughs> and they're giving you a backhand there for mentioning their name as many times as possible. No, no, no. But I mean, it's, um, mm. you know, so, they, yeah. they, were, they were kind enough. Um, Ooh, I, I, I got the mug as well. Animal. So <laughs> I think I'm missing a pillow and a hoodie. But I'll, I was going to say, you, you need a cap, the hoodie, the umbrella. A poster where that is, where that picture is a poster. Actually, I I remember when I when I was working with Instant Co. Uh, going through the merchandising there, and it was interesting how we one of the things we did we had two sets of corporate merchandising. One was the just throw it away, and the other was oh no, the, these are these are very nice clients. We actually had a third level, which was the really fancy pens and stuff, but we, no one ever saw those, but we had two different types of umbrellas, the ones that would often get left on the train and the ones that were for special clients and the rest. Um, and it, it, it's interesting, the sort of stuff that the companies come up with. I think, thankfully, we're moving away from the cheap and nasty pens, the simple pads, and, you know, especially with um, the real-world event that you go to, you know, they're often just thrown on stands as the, the cheap and easy giveaway. And I think it, you know, it, and, I mean, Charlotte's going to have something to say about this, I'm sure. The psychology of, I mean, um, I mean, 
what have I got here? I've got a, I've got a stem rush pen. I've got, you know, I've got some that are, I mean, this was um, financial force and this is a lovely solid metal pen. And, you know, instantly my mind is thinking, wow, this is really nice merch <clears throat> swag. Um, and it really does set the tone for the business, which I think is, is incredible. I mean, there's nothing worse than having the cheap pen. And I think the important part about the merchandising, it needs to be something that's there and visible. So for me, it's often the the T-shirt the being worn, the pad being used, the pen being used and not thrown in the bin the next day because it's failed. Or actually one of my favorites, some of the cuddly toys. Now, if you she hasn't joined yet. There's normally a little five-year-old around here at some point during these webinars. And I, I will admit that about five or six of her stuffed toys are actually branded with different companies. But it, it's interesting. It means that that brand is, is ever-present. And that's what's so important. Is that right? I, um, I object to the, uh, like, why do we need to have branded teddy bears? And give those. I, I've, I, they are enough. Why thing. not? No idea. No, it, it, but no, but you haven't. You've been saying why not is not an answer to the question. Why is it? Okay, <laughs> but we're on the playground, right? What is the what is the point of branding a teddy bear it's for a child with Insenco or with CMS? I have no idea what the thinking is behind it. Now, is it to substitute for the fact that that parent hasn't had time to go out and buy a teddy bear for that kid because they've been tied up on their tax deal for? for I understand that's what it's about, and it's a, you know, uh, <clears throat> a nice thing to do. Something, but it's, I it's, don't understand the point. But there must be better things that we can do. It, but it's it's doing what it's doing right now. It's it's making you remember that teddy bear. Yeah. It's being different, and you wouldn't you, if you didn't remember that teddy bear, then you wouldn't be talking about it. So it's doing exactly what it's meant to do. It's not meant and, teddy bear. Yeah, for kids. It's, it's different. <laughs> My favourite was actually the, the the stuffed crocodile, which uh, it just reminds me of uh, the company, and it, it isn't heavily branded. It was quite nice. But Charlotte, I'd be interested to hear hear your thoughts on this. Yeah. Um, so my take, um, maybe I can um, start off with the teddy bear um, argument. Um, I think I love merch. First of all, to say that I think merch does two things really well or can do two things really well one of them being is get into your home and especially in legal services like that's that's exceptional that's not you know legal service is not something that you usually have in your home you, so to be able to have them at home is extremely powerful um but secondly and i think a lot of merch fails to do this or well people when they choose merch fail to do this is take the teddy bear as an example if I am a divorce lawyer who's working with you to make sure that you can see your children when you want to, or you can you know, have, have the rights that you know, we are fighting for together, then suddenly that teddy bear has a message. Suddenly a pen does not do what the teddy bear is doing. And that's, I think, the strategic thinking that people miss when they choose the merch that because everyone goes for the pan and it's like oh yeah it's you know easy and it's just cheap as merch right but the teddy bear like we fail to think about the object and exactly like we use things right it's like the merch is exciting because it's something that you use you not just put on the wall because otherwise just with paper pictures right um so i think that we fail to match the type of the merch oftentimes to the youth and to the client and to the emotional state that the client might be in. Gosh. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to think what I can give for my clients then. <laughs> it, it, it's <laughs> less it's it's Little sides, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, and, and, uh, but you know, like there are so many creative ways. So I, I think, you know, people really should be putting more effort into um, that, but uh, another thing that I wanted to say with merch and, um, um, for example, candles and, and teas and um, all sorts of like consumable stuff are actually one of my favorites because, um, and again, let's look outside the sector and let's look at service marketing, um, which is something that I'm a massive fan of. And in service marketing, one of the first things that they will tell you is the service scape marketing, which is what is the environment like? And, you know, the, the way that you um, 
you know, structure the furniture in your um, office, maybe, that makes people feel a certain way. So I think what Merge does, or has the ability to do, is for you to influence the environment that your client is in, even when they are not in your office. So right now, when we live in a digital world, and everyone is doing dealing with clients, um, you know, remotely, I think the message of a branded um, bottle of wine on a Friday, you know, scheduled to arrive on a Friday night from your lawyer to say, don't worry, it's going to be sorted by Monday. I think that's extremely powerful. You can tap into their lives. It serves a purpose. It has a message. And it has the ability to influence people's environment. Candles. I, I want to see candles. Certain smells make you feel a certain way. Why are we not leveraging that? Um, bloody, why, why are we not sending people live? So that is what Sarah needs to do. She needs to get a candle and use something like when your candle blows out. Now it's like the real. Something like that. Sorry, Charlie. I don't know if that's a bit too near. Yeah. No. Candle in the wind? No. No. No, no Rich. <laughs> you got it all wrong. <laughs> sorry, Charlotte. Sorry. Oh, no. Like, sorry. That I, I feel like I, I was going down the uh, road of rent. So it's probably good that I, I was stopped. But I think that, you know, merch is extremely powerful and people don't realize it's not just an awareness piece. It's not just a you know, have it on the shelf and, you know, remember it. If you get the merch right, I actually think it's a game changer. It's it's interesting seeing, uh, especially the last few years, the way um, some of the, the the edible side of, of merch is coming through. I mean, I, I've received biscuit tins and all sorts. Can't quite imagine what a Linklater's red or a Clifford Chance sparkling white might be like. Um, but it, it's interesting. I think the the candles as well. I mean that the sense of smell from a from a biological point of view is 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 such a direct connection actually to the brain and to memory. Um, that's that's a very interesting one. Um, although what HFW <coughs> smells like in candle form, who knows? Uh, that would be interesting to find out. Let's have a look. I mean, Rich has got. I'm just going to bring up this this image here. Let's <laughs> see. So this is this is Rich's contribution to today with Eric Robinson's solicitors. So what do you do? You actually get the whole owl? Uh, well, basic. So Eric the owl, as he's aptly known. Um, Eric, I think he was created maybe five six years ago. Um, but what they've also created is little Eric the Owl stress toys. And there were two types. There was a, a generic one, which was the same color and branding as the one you see on screen at the moment. And then there was a golden owl as well. And I can't remember, I think the golden owl was given to the members of staff, but I can't remember exactly. But this one is always stuck in my head. Um, and needless to say, a number of other law firms have also come up with an owl because it's it's wise, it's it's knowledgeable and all this kind of aspect. But yeah, Eric the Owl, this kind of was it eight, nine foot giant owl that I got to see stands in their in the reception area at one point. Um, so, yeah, Eric the Owl, he was fantastic. But the stress toy owl and just touching on your merch coming through, um, Simona Hamlet, who I did a, a workshop for her networking group. She sent me this through today, which is her branded chocolate. Um, so I got oh. that sent through, which has got the signature and everything on it. So thank you, Simona, for that. Really yeah. appreciate it. That Eric yeah, the one, branded chocolate, I like that. It's not even consistent within the picture. He's like, got, is, is he wearing contacts as he's standing out? Because he's wearing glasses on the wall, right? I, you, you need to know. Are you really sleeping too much the into owl? It. <laughs> I, I, I like the idea of the owl, but any stress toy from law firm, I think it's a terrible branding. And I'm going to explain why. If you think that you stress out your clients enough that they're going to need a stress point, then they're thinking of you. And you think that's a good association that they're using a stress toy when they're using your brand. I don't think that's great branding. In fact, I would go as far as to say, I think that's bad branding and don't do it. So to Charlotte's point, that having uh, an association of a nice smell, uh, frankly, I've told you before that I've had a great experience of Link Nature's going have a cup of tea there, right? And when they serve it to you, being served those kind of things, great. Right? I think that's a really good idea. Um, Osborne Clark, 
honey from the beehives that are on the roof and the Bristol office. Oh, you can buy good. it on the reception. Lovely brand association, right? Um, there are loads of good associations, but why do we put stress of dealing with your lawyers into the brand association with oh, it's this flipping guy again i've got a you know i mean who wants that association anyway but they could be going through stress as well they're going through yeah, stress yeah, surely. so you can yeah, see it from the other side. it's a fair point but you know you don't need a stress relief tour if you've got a good lawyer that's the point so i, ju I just think i just think it's a strange association to me I like the idea of the stress toy that says, you know, if you've picked me up three times today, maybe it's time to give us a call. Yeah. Uh, it's maybe something along those lines. So, uh, Simon, you had a few that you submitted. Uh, let me just bring... Well, they were submitted by um, loads of people around the business. See, um, Kat sent this one in, and she used to work at BOP a while ago. She's now... This is a great, brilliant... Um, a researcher to the legal industry, uh, Flair Insight. Um, and this, I think, sits in the toy collection of her, um, of her twin boys still to this day. And she hasn't worked at BLP for years. In fact, they're not even called BLP anymore. Yeah. Right? So it's it's classy, it's clever. It's basically saying, I mean, look at the brand association with London and the red bus, which is an international symbol. It's quite obvious what they're trying to do. And yet it's well loved. We're talking about it today. How old is this? I don't know, 12, 14 years old, something like that as well. I love it. I think it's really simple and really thoughtful. Now, how does that differ from the teddy bear? I have no idea. I don't think it's fair for me to say I can't have the teddy bear and I can't have this. But, um, yeah, this, I, I do think the fact that it's just been well and that kind of stuff is is really um it's really useful i still think a brand shows up in front of one person i've got a challenge for that i think a brand being around the house as charlotte said that's fine but i think it needs to either do what david's t-shirt is doing and send the brand out so it's brand by association all uh, right and tell the rest of us that whoever is today's sponsor is, is today's sponsor or it needs to speak to the person who's using the thing as well which i think is much more useful if you can do and pull that off but i do i do like what they were trying to achieve with it Right, who wants to have a go at me? Because it's, I clearly well, chose no, an option here. So. No, no, I, I think it's interesting because <laughs> I'm actually thinking of uh, my daughter's semi... I mean, some of the branding on these toys, I will say, isn't huge. It's not like they're, they're big brand things. But it's interesting. I mean, they're, they're mostly within uh, marketing companies. And it, it's interesting, you know, we're, we're in a room, we're playing, and, and sometimes I'll see the uh, communicator, alligator, and it's a reminder, oh, yeah, I, I, I need to do something with them or uh, I've got a couple of dot mailer or dot digital as they are now dogs. I think they're called Winston. Um, and it, it's it's surprising how much of a, a reminder that is uh, sometimes out of the blue. But I, I, I quite like that. Um, the the die cast toys. I mean, I can always imagine in in a few years time seeing that sort of thing on Antiques Roadshow, <laughs> you know, for the right brand and, and being worth an absolute fortune. Okay. So what else have we got here? Travis Smith. Is this a, is this a running kiss? It's a skiing kit, actually. Uh, ah. like it's, it's, it's what's clever about it is, you know, it's dedicated to a certain trip and a certain group. Uh, I think that's quite clever. Uh, loads of the firms themselves have got a sports kit, of course. We had it at um, Burgess Salmon, a couple of other firms as well. And I think it is nice to have those things. And when you turn up to the City 5K run and everyone's wearing their kind of branded kit, I think it doesn't look too great if um, you're the only firm that's not doing, as it were, or going on the legal walk with 10K as well. But this is a really nice example. Why? I think it shows off their brand really nicely. It's a nice, fresh, new brand. I think that um, uh, they've clearly gone for some high-end kind of nurture as well. Um, it, just the simplicity of it, really. I, I do like it. Um, there's nothing else to say about it apart from that. I, I think it's just a, a classy execution. But, I mean, I, th this is interesting, again, I think, because it, it's the, the merchandising that is often used internally as well. I know there's been a few law firms I've worked with where, you know, uh, members of staff, they've gone out running uh, of a lunchtime and the marketing department we we put together running tops i mean it started from some of the sponsored legal runs and walks um but in the end we decided look if if anyone here is is going out for a run lunchtime after work whatever you need a running top uh we're ordering him in through the the marketing department 
Uh, so all those runners got free tops, which I thought was was interesting. It's that internal merch promotion. And I think it's um, really smart for exactly the reason that, you know, when we talk about marketing, it's so often just external marketing that we talk about. And what you guys did is exactly what we don't talk about enough is the internal marketing. And I think what Merge does, and this works on both sides, but probably more important internally, is gives you a sense of ownership. So, like, you don't wear your StreamYard T-shirt for, like, things that you own and things that you wear say something about who you are. And the fact that you give your employees that sense of ownership over the company's brand creates that extra connection. And guess what? They have the choice not to put that T-shirt on. The fact that they do says something about them when they are casually running um people on the street will know that they are lawyers or they work in a law firm and i think that's extremely powerful in saying that we are proud to be working here they will be more committed it's going to give a good culture to to the company and people in a good culture work better perform better there's a, another Travis Smith. I think yeah, this is the, the, the cycling is the old top. one. Yeah, it's the old brand. Um, but again, it just goes to show that they, as you'd expect from Travis, they go for a high end kind of part of the market and they spend more money on it. But this one, apparently, uh, according to a story, uh, was uh, spotted way abroad by the managing partner being worn by somebody else uh, whilst on holiday in foreign climate. I love it when that kind of thing happens as well so it just you know it's it's nice um it's nice quality again and it's clear that that is in keeping i think with travis market position anyway is to go for that kind of you know you know high end and and really distinctive kind of approach and and, and be you know well just something to uh, uh what am i trying to say uh, to go for you know something that you might want to obtain as it were so i quite like it it's interesting. I think over the years I've seen a few where it's been uh, the branded T-shirt or so, or the, the branded cuddly toy or whatever, and it's been send us a picture of it somewhere in the world. And um, that often leads to some absolutely absolutely incredible images too. So what have we got here? Are these ah these are the frisbees? Yeah, um, now that's thanks, interesting. Thanks, uh, Andrew, for sending these in. Andrew King, who is head of litigation at Lennon's. Uh, he's a really good guy. And what I like about this is it, it kind of crosses into uh, that kind of um, household situation. And um, what's clever about it, I think, is, okay, so it's going to sit, sit around a long, long time, right? It is. You're not going to use it for large tracks of the year unless you're based in California or something. But when you do use it, you're bound to be having fun. And I think that's a really clever association to be throwing around a Frisbee on the beach all the time and then using that brand association with the happiness. It's not quite Sarah's sense of humour, kind of, you know, putting that off. But I do think it I do think it does something quite clever there as well. And people don't get too annoyed with the Frisbee. So, yeah, I, 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 I really do like it. He says that um, when Andrew wrote to me about it, he said that it tends to get used at the family, the firm family barbecue. And I think they have a client's event as well. And they tend to use it there. I think that's just brilliant just doing it that way. I was I was just thinking, I can imagine. I mean, it, it's funny as well as the cuddly toys. I've, I've got a few branded uh, balls, beach ball. I've, okay, I've got a lot of branded swag. Let's let's face it. Um, but I was just thinking, you know, items like this for the for the family law firm. Um, that that could be very interesting. I like one that. of the um, one of the events that um, I think it was CMS that did it years ago. No, it was CMS that did it years ago because they're not too far from the Barbican in their old offices. They um, hired out the Barbican Cinema when it used to be inside the Barbican. Uh, um, so it's quite a few years ago now, and they showed a Harry Potter movie on a Saturday morning, right? They sent out the invitation system. Do you remember how hard it was to get to see those when they first came out, right? And guess what? Because the kids were told that they were going to see this Harry Potter, the attendance rate of this thing was 98%. Nobody, nobody fails to come when your kids are bought into it. So I think marketing can be done quite cleverly to kind of drag individuals along to these things as well. But yeah. We got a, another. And this is this is quite the the staple of the the last few years, the the water bottle or the um, 
I mean, it's water bottles and coffee cups, the recyclables, the thermal. And again, it comes back to, as we said, and as Charlotte was saying, it's that something that's that's physically there. It's present. You know, that that branded thermos with your hot drink in on your way to work um, gives you that good feeling. And and these I think these look great. And um, these are quite popular as as merch over the last few years. One of the uh, people who came back to me said that the one they got given when they worked at Taylor Wessing, they'd used for 14 years since. Yeah. Right. So I think it gets over that sustainability point. Let's not give away junk. Let's not give away things. It's either got to be consumable or durable, I think, but nothing in between. It shouldn't be something you junk, you know, within months or whatever as well. And this, I think, is a good, goes back to what I was just saying a minute ago. I think it constantly brands to the person who's using it. Right. So every time you pick up that bottle, you can't help but think of um, Owen Mitchell. And it's interesting. I mean, back to the, the quality there, it's, you know, I, I've had a few of those and some of them I've just picked up at events. I don't particularly know the brand, but when they start peeling, falling apart, they don't work. Actually, some of the worst, some of the worst swag merch I've had has been from Google. Uh, it's it's been it's been pretty terrible quality i will be honest uh they're going to penalize me now you watch my sites are going to just just drop like a stone um but it, it it's fascinating the other one uh that's been popular recently has been the the battery packs and charging cables and you know that's another one which you really need if you're going to invest in it from a company point of view you need to make sure you're spending a little bit extra and getting the quality because there's a few companies I've had them from, and the battery packs last a few weeks, the charging cables fall apart after a month, and you're left looking at this branded item that's falling apart. And it it, it doesn't really give you a, a, a good mental picture. For, again, for, from a psychological point of view, it's this, oh, that's what they're like, feeling that you get. Well, you'll throw it out as well. So yeah. it, it's no longer with you anyway. We had, my dad had one of those battery chargers and it blew up on him on a coach in Italy. Um, and they had to throw it out and they chucked water on it. It was bouncing around. I won't say who it came from, but it, it blew up. But one of the things that I, when, when you mentioned about, you know, the USB chargers and all of that, loads of people started doing that when GDPR was kicking off two and a half yeah. years ago. Suddenly everyone's got, at LegalX, I was there, there was thousands of people with USB pens, USB uh, sticks, the whole nine yards. Nobody would touch them because they all, they're all going, what's the security risk with these? Because GDPR consultants were saying, you know, secondary devices, anything like that, you need to be cautious if you get them from a third party. So yeah, it was all weird and wonderful. One of the ones I liked, I got this from a, a friend of mine. It was pointer, there we go. This is nine years old, because that's yeah. how it's going to be. And it's got a bottle opener on, on it. Perfect for my little key ring. But I've got a light, got a bottle opener, does what it does it says on the tin you know that that's another item that i think works well i mean it's funny you mention that i've got <laughs> god i've got <laughs> too much I've, I've got i've got too much swag um <laughs> but things like yeah the the bottle openers are are really great they're they're useful they they can sit on your key ring uh carabiners as well i found are are actually quite useful things to have what? and i hey well, they can go in the bin with teddy bears, carabiners. What is the point? As, as long as they're good quality, they're, they're, hey, look, I use Rich is, stuff Rich is, around the place. Which is actually going to agree with me on something. It looks like they're for a minute. No, no, I'm, no, no I, I, I'm still advocate for the cuddly toys, and I'm going to show you one. What's not the best cuddly toy than the little meerkats for the insurance companies? And they yeah. turn these into collectible items, a bit like Lloyd's Bank with the pigs, the piggy banks. Those now are huge collectible items. I'd love to see a law firm do like a collection of something like that so insurance but cuddly toys so there is definitely room for it i tell you i i funny enough, I, I had a, i had a couple of those and again i you know one thing i was really surprised about was the quality uh i mean one one item i've got here this was this was from a, a particular event and it was around uh local marketing search location and it was it was a fantastic idea so this is i don't know if you see it's a tile, tile. and it's fully tile. fully branded in their colors 
Brilliant. And I just thought that was that was fabulous. Yay! It's time. It's time. It's way beyond normal time. Oh, I know. Hold so on. One of the on. things oh. I was going to suggest um, we do, maybe it's a fun exercise to finish off with um, as we clock off soon, is how do you guys feel about coming up with a couple of cool merch ideas? So maybe even pair it to a specific area of law, because I, I just had this brain flash of what I think you should do, Sarah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, uh -oh. um, and I think um, this might also be cool for someone who is in family law. Um, I would give out photo albums. Okay. Oh, that's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, I think it alive. has a beautiful message of making memories, living life to its best, and printable photos, right? That, like, mm -hmm. you know, let's be honest, who sits down to this day? I never sit down to look at my photos digitally from holidays, which is like 5,000. But anything that I have in a photo album, I know that that's the best of from, from that holiday. And I think that's like, that would be such a beautiful thing and thoughtful and resonates with what you do. Um, and, and you know what? I've I've never seen anyone do it. No, no, I haven't. No, that's a, a great idea. Um, I think I think it's really what's interesting. That. Companies like, companies like need to look at. Yeah. Eh? Companies need to, to need to look at what they're what they're spending on some of this stuff because you know ten thousand cheap pens versus fewer items of higher quality is always going to work out better and just one last image so this is this is my desk it doesn't normally look like this uh this might have been slightly staged but see, just see see if you can spot the branding um <laughs> <laughs> so you know i i've i've worked with semrush for some time and i mean no. amy Amy's a big fan of the, the Semrush Foxes, uh, the mugs. And, you know, the one thing I'll, I'll say for them is they, they do balance out some, some great quality items too. And the, the other item that I've seen a lot of the last few years has, of course, been socks, which I, I, I've got to say, when I first saw, I thought that is the most bizarre thing. But the amount of companies that are putting out these promotional pairs of socks has has been phenomenal. I can't, I can't money say. penny, money no. penny, are probably when it comes to International Sock Day, which I think, or well, there's a charity around it at the moment. Money penny are the number one for socks. They, I think it's something they get produced ten thousand pairs of socks every two years that they hand out to people. My wife has three pairs, and she says they are the most comfortable socks ever. Yeah. Whenever I go to a conference, I always go to their stand and go, look, can I come there for the socks, please? So, yeah, they're, they're always handing out socks. And also, and can I just say, social media is full of money penny socks. Like, yeah. I can definitely think of at least five different people who I've seen money penny socks from. So can we have money penny socks? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to Bernie about them. I'll see if we can get some money penny socks. <laughs> let, let, let's mention the name again. <laughs> money penny socks yeah we'll, 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 we'll put links in the comments to all these companies <laughs> and you know maybe they'd like to come and, and join us next week and have a chat sure, so i had another pitch if if no one else has a pitch just because i'm mindful of time and i'm very keen to share this <laughs> is i think um another really cool opportunity for law firms again right now and Right, people realize that we don't have to go into a boring office anymore. We don't want to go to central London uh, to sign a piece of paper, etc. Like, we are not doing that. And I think another really cool um, angle for a law firm that can run your case completely remotely from start to end would be to send slippers or something that screams home something that you would never wear outside. And I thought I would, <laughs> I will show you this. This is granted only works if you're a female. Um, but um, this is the new social media, the new Gen Z um, thing that girls use um, to do their makeups. I, at I, home. I think that would look good on Simon. <laughs> <Yeah>. Second. <laughs> so I, it hasn't I, I, I'm just in disbelief this idea. Right? <laughs> 
But um, anyway, I, I just thought that it, it was such a funny thing. Um, and you know what? This brings in the humor. Like maybe merch, maybe merch is one of the ways in which you can incorporate humor. And you know, if if I had one of these from a law firm with a note, you know, you can you can wear this because you can just call us. It doesn't even have to be a video call. Maybe like merch doesn't have to go by itself. It can go with a little note, etc. And there's so much meaning in physical possessions that they really should take advantage of what the message behind is. So, I can't wait for this really good idea for the graduate recruitment teams. Just, just quickly, Rich, just, just ping this over to me, and I think this Brilliant. is this is Grace. Yeah, um, it's, it's, so that was based on I, I literally typed legal marketing merchandise, and this came up on Redbubble. So I'm going to order this and see if I can uh, get a couple more and, and maybe send out to you guys. But yeah, arguing with a lawyer is like wrestling with a pig in mud some sooner or later you what's it say you realize yeah. they like it so yeah i love that yeah like there's, that. A, there's a guy uh, called non-equity partner on instagram who has got so much stuff in his thread about merch that he's created a new merch thread and is selling law firm ripoff kind of merch with his own brand on it instead. Go and take a look. It was substituted. It's, it was um, given to me by one of the people who responded. Go and have a look on Instagram. Uh, I think that's well worth having a look at as well. But it's kind of a it's kind of a little bit of a p take out of law firm merchandise as well. It's well worth having a look at. Maybe I need to develop my own tote bag with uh, putting the fun back into dyeing on it then, don't I? <laughs> no, but the photo album idea is not a bad one for you at all. I, I think there's something quite clever in that. I did, yeah, it is. The one, my wife got one yesterday that turned up. That, that there was one that you do online and it turns up as a physical thing. And there's something quite clever about that, about digital estates, about securing that somewhere as well. I think there's quite a lot in there that you can run with that idea as well. Um, yeah, great idea. <laughs> we're, 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 we're going to close this up now because because somebody somebody obviously needs some attention. Oh, it's rich. Oh. Um, I'd just like to say, uh, Sarah, especially, thank you very much for for joining us this week. It's it's, it's been fabulous time. hearing hearing more That's about it. yourself and having your input on our usual inane chatter that we have <laughs> during I'm our always session. Always inane chatter. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Uh, and, and thank you, Charlotte, Simon, Rich. Uh, I think, you know, this has been fascinating. You know, well, I could talk merch all, all day. Not a problem. Um, but until until next week, um, I don't know. Does anyone have any final last words they want to say? We'll be back next week. Oh. What do you guys want to hear about? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good point. I mean, uh, we're always open to, to widen discussions, hear what, what people want to hear us talk about. If you have any specific questions uh, around law firms, around marketing, just, just ping us a message. Uh, we're all available on LinkedIn. We're, I think we're all available on Twitter, various social platforms. Um, so, yes, yeah, send, send us your information. And uh, also, if you'd like to join us on one of these sessions, feel free to get in touch and be the next special guest. Oh, it's, it's, it's going to be a VIP slot. I feel this coming on. <laughs> Thank you, David. No problem. Well, until next week, uh, this is me and a monkey. Saying goodbye. <laughs> Thank bye you, bye. Everyone. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.